Uh, I'm going to be recording all of these meetings, so I'll be posting them on iCollege as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about all the changes that we're doing first and foremost in this class. So I'm going to share my Chrome screen. Okay. So a couple changes that are happening. Um, I'm sure you guys all read the online class structure. Uh, we'll just go through it. Availability, obviously we're going through WebEx. Uh, I will be on WebEx through these two links during class time and office hours. So if you have any questions uh, outside of class, just click on the office hours link and you should be able to, uh, you should be able to talk to me or chat or whatever. Uh, next, materials. All the materials will usually be posted on Sunday. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to post the PowerPoints and then instead of recording my own commentary over the PowerPoints, I'll be doing that during these class times anyways. So I'm going to post the lectures that we're doing instead of recording a standalone uh, chat. It'll be the same t uh, content and it'll do all the same things, just you won't see the lecture uh, videos or the PowerPoint videos with audio until after we've had class. Okay, um, next up, discussions. Right, so if you guys are on iCollege, if you go under assessments and click on discussions, you'll see I've set up a couple of uh, forums, mainly just for questions. Uh, so if you're doing your homework and you don't understand something, you can go under the appropriate section and ask us a question. Or if you've watched a lecture video or read a PowerPoint and you don't understand something in there, uh, you can ask the questions in here. I will respond to every single one of them. Um, I'll be checking them daily. And yeah, so you can do that. If Let's go into one. So let's say you had a question about induction. You would start a new thread and say, you know, I need help on question three or whatever and then you can ask say hey i don't understand this part um and if you don't feel comfortable like i don't know some people don't like admitting to everyone they don't understand something you can post it anonymously right so you can click this checkbox and you can ask a question anonymously no one will know who posted it and it can just be a you know a question <coughs> so i definitely uh recommend using this if you're not understanding anything because unfortunately just the reality with online classes is there's going to be more self-learning than there would be uh, in a standard face-to-face -face class at least in my opinion okay <clears throat> so that's where you can ask questions there's a forum uh, and again I will respond to all of them all right let's talk about homework So homework, uh, I'm going to assign all the homework uh, also on Sunday, the same time that I release all of the lecture uh, PowerPoints, all the PowerPoint notes. And let's see if I can do student view, yeah. So they're going to be released on Sunday. Uh, instead of them being due on, usually it was the following Thursday, I've extended all the due dates to the following Sunday. So for example, sections 5.2, 5.3, and 6.1 aren't due until 11.59 on Sunday. So that should give you guys plenty of time. Again, I know you'll be doing a lot of other work with your other classes, so I think it's appropriate to give you guys some extra time to work on the homework. So homework due dates are extended. Um, just be sure to check WebAssign and know which Sunday uh, the homework's due. Don't accidentally, you know, miss the due dates. Okay, so I mean, homework's pretty much the same. Just a, a later due date. Moving on to quizzes. Uh, quizzes will be posted on iCollege. Uh, the thing with quizzes is I believe we only have one more quiz for the remainder of the semester, right? So we don't have a quiz this week. We will have a quiz next week. The week after that is a test, I believe. And then the week after that, I won't give a quiz. 
and the week after that is finals. So that's what, one, two, th three, four, four weeks left. So we only have one more quiz. Uh, I'll post the quiz on iCollege the same way that I posted quiz five that said a take home quiz and you'll submit it in iCollege as well. So there will be a uh, assignment or quizzes that you will, uh, after downloading the quiz, you can print it out and write on it. Uh, and you'll have to send it back to me. So that's a picture or a scanner. If you take a picture, just be sure to get you know the full page, decent lighting, don't have a blurry picture, uh, especially if you have soft handwriting. Uh, it makes it very hard for me to read. So make sure you have a good picture and uh, re-upload re it onto iCollege. So that's how it will be for the quiz. Uh, tests, exam three will be the same way. If we post on iCollege, you'll have 72 hours. So I guess not really 72 hours. I'll just make it three days. So the end of the third day. Uh, you'll have three days to complete it. And you'll re-upload it on iCollege as well. Same for the final exam. Final exam will be hosted on iCollege. You'll have three days to complete it and return it back onto iCollege. Okay. And I th think that does it for all the administrative stuff. Are there any questions about how the class is going to be moving forward? No. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no questions, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about inductions. So let me move to my PowerPoint. All right. So everyone can see the PowerPoint. Yeah. If you can't see a PowerPoint, let me know in chat. I, it should work fine. All right, so <clears throat> let's go straight to it. Proof by induction. So let's start off with a uh, an analogy. So let's imagine that you have uh, an infinite string of dominoes, okay? So you have domino one, domino two, uh, domino three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity, right? The point is that we have a starting domino, and we're going forward this way. Uh, what conditions would you need for to, to guarantee that all of the dominoes will fall over, right? What conditions would we need to make sure that all the dominoes, uh, in, in, you know, in one push, uh, all fall over? Yeah, assuming that, you know, they're already standing up. Well... The first condition that needs to happen is you need to make sure that domino one falls over, right? You need to ensure that domino one will fall over. That's right, because that's like the starting point. You need to make sure that this one falls over first. So condition one is we need to make sure that domino one will fall over. Uh, in induction, this is what's known as the base case. So we make sure domino one falls over. Uh, what else would need to happen? Well, you would need to guarantee that if domino one falls over, then domino two will fall over, right? And you need to make sure that if domino two falls over, then domino three will fall over. You need to make sure that do if domino three falls over, then domino four will fall over, and so on and so forth. So you need this like chain of making sure that if domino, say, k falls over, then domino k plus 1 will fall over. And this is for any k bigger than or equal to 1, right? So you need to show that if domino k falls over, then domino k plus 1 will also fall over. And if you can show these two things, right? If you can show these two things, then that would ensure that all of the dominoes, after an infinite amount of time, uh, would fall over. Does that make sense? Well, you don't have to respond, but uh, if that doesn't make sense, just chime in in chat. 
Yeah, so if we make sure that domino 1 falls over, and then if domino k falls over, then domino k plus 1 will also fall over for every k bigger than or equal to 1, then we can ensure that all the dominoes fall. Uh, this type of argument right here with a base case, and this is called the induction step. So step one is called a base case. Step two is called the induction step. Uh, these two things together is what's known as just induction. Okay, So this is how induction works. You prove a base case and you prove an induction step. So let's be a little more clear uh, without the domino example. <coughs> induction is used when you're trying to prove a universal statement uh, that has a starting point. So for example, in our example just now, our starting point was domino one, right? So induction is used when you have a universal statement with a starting point. So they're, prov they're used to prove things like this. For any integer n bigger than or equal to a, a is just the starting point. For any integer n bigger than or equal to a, p of n, just some property about it, right? So this looks very similar to our normal uh, universal statements. Just induction is used when you have a starting point instead of it just being like, you know, instead of being all integers, it's just, you know, starting from, say, 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3, some property about it. So induction is used. It works this way. You prove that P of A is true. That is, you prove that your base case is true. Again, this is called the base case. And then you assume that P of K is true and prove that P of K plus one must also be true. This is the induction step. And again, if we do this, we've proved uh, the universal statement that we were trying to prove. <coughs> okay, uh, any questions? Give it a few seconds. Okay, so let's move on to a example. Let's prove that for any integer n bigger than or equal to zero, n times n plus one is even. Uh, we had a question like this on the test where we proved for every integer n, n times n plus one is even. Um, induction only works if you have a starting point. So this is kind of like a weaker th thing that we're gonna prove, but it highlights how induction works really well. So we're just going to prove that for every non-negative integer n, n times n plus 1 is even. And we're going to use induction instead of the other methods that we've used. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to let p of n be the sentence n times n plus 1 is even. Okay? So just giving a name to this uh, statement, or preposition, I guess. Uh, the base case, we need to show that p of 0 is true because we're starting with n being at zero. Okay, so we're going to assume that p of zero is true. And what does that mean? Uh, we need to show it. So we need to plug in zero f into n, right, into this sentence. And you would get, you would need to show that zero times zero plus one is even. And this is obviously even. A lot of times the base case is very simple to show. It'll be things like this plug in zero. And you get 0 times 0 plus 1. That's 0. 0 is even, so p of 0 is true. So you would show the base case. Uh, then you show the induction step. Okay, You prove the induction step. You show that for each integer k bigger than or equal to 0, if p of k is true, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 must also be true. Okay, So it's like a, it's like a secondary... Uh, proof inside your theorem. It's like a whole new thing. If p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. You need to show that. So you'll assume that p of k is true. So you plug in k to this sentence. You plug in k here. And you're going to assume that k times k plus 1 is already even. Okay? And you need to show that k plus 1 times k plus 2 is also even. Right? Because p 
of k plus 1 is the sentence, plug in k plus 1 into here, k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 is even. All right, p of k plus 1 is the sentence k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 is even, or k plus 1 times k plus 2. So this is what this is the uh, plan of attack. This is what we're going to do. So let's do it. <coughs> For energy integer n bigger than or equal to 0, n times n plus 1 is even. So we will prove it by induction. So I'm just stating so that everyone can see the uh, method that we're using. Let p of n be the sentence n times n plus 1 is even. Step 1, our base case. Show that p of 0 is true. So if n equals 0, we plug in 0 for n, and we get 0 times 0 plus 1. Oh, that's a mistake. That should be 0. Zero times zero plus one is zero, and since zero is even, p of zero is true. And it's as simple as that. So the base case is done. Next step, we need to show the induction step. So we need to show that if p of k is true, then p of k plus one is also true. For each k bigger than or equal to zero. So we assume that p of k is true for some integer k bigger than or equal to zero. That means that we are assuming k times k plus 1 is even. k times k plus 1 is even. And what do we know about even numbers? Well, even numbers are just equal to 2 times something. So that means that k times k plus 1 is equal to 2j for some integer j. And this is the critical information we're going to be using to show that p of k plus 1 is true. Okay, so we need to show that k plus 1 times k plus 2 is even. And we know how to do these things, right? If we need to show something is even, we write it out and see if we can write it as 2 times some integer. So that's what we're going to do with k plus 1 times k plus 2. So k plus 1 times k plus 2 is equal to k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Uh, all I did was I took this entire term and I distributed it to the k here and the 2 here. Okay? So I didn't do a full expansion, and I'll, the reason for that will be very clear in a second. So I took this whole term and distributed it to the k into the 2. So I get k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Okay. Uh, what now? Well, if you'll notice, here we have k times k plus 1. But up here we're assuming that k times k plus 1 is equal to 2j. So I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to replace k times k plus 1 with 2j. because k times k plus 1 is 2j. And then I, on this side, I still have uh, 2 times k plus 1. That doesn't change. All right. <coughs> so next, I'm going to distribute this 2 to each term. And I get 2j plus 2k plus 2. And remember, our goal is to show that this thing is even, that k times k plus or k plus 1 times k plus 2 is even. So let's factor out a 2. And we get 2 times j plus k plus 1. So we just showed that k plus 1 times k plus 2 is equal to 2 times an integer, which means that it's even, which is what we wanted to show. So we show that if k times k plus 1 is even, then k times k or k plus 1 times k plus 2 is also even. So by induction, we're done. It feels like it just stops very abruptly, but that's it. So I'm going to give a, 
few seconds for anyone to type up any questions that you have. All right, if there's no questions, then we will, uh, we will move on to the next slide. So I hope that made sense uh, because they're only going to get a little, you know, they're going to get a little more difficult than this. But the structure is the same. The structure is the same in each one. So let's move on to the next example. Uh, <coughs> let's prove that for every integer n bigger than or equal to 0, 4 to the n minus 1 is divisible by 3. Let's remember what being divisible by 3 means. If 3 divides x, or if x is divisible by 3, this means that you can write x as 3 times some integer j. So that's what being divisible by 3 means. You can just write it as 3 times something. Uh, and we're going to prove it by induction. So we will prove this by induction. Let P of n be the sentence 4 to the n minus 1 is divisible by 3. First thing we do in induction is we prove the base case. Uh, our base case is going to be when n is 0. So we're going to show that P of 0 is true. If n is 0, then 4 to the 0 minus 1 is 0. Remember that anything to the 0 is 1. So we just have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Uh, 0 is divisible by 3, so p of 0 is true. 0 is divisible by everything except for 0. So 0 is divisible by 3, so p of 0 is true. All right, so we showed that p of 0 is true. We showed that the first domino is going to fall over, if you will. Uh, now we need to show that for each k bigger than or equal to 0, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. So we will assume that p of k is true for some integer k bigger than or equal to 0. p of k is just the sentence 4 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 3. So we're assuming that 4 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 3. Being divisible by 3 means that you can write it as 3j. So 4 to the k minus 1 is equal to 3j for some integer j. Okay, uh, this step is not clear why I did this, but it will in a minute. I added 1 to both sides of that equation. So over here, I added 1 to both sides. And I solved for 4 to the k. So I have 4 to the k is equal to 3j plus 1. All right, so let's remind ourselves uh, what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that p of k plus 1 is true. So we're trying to show that 4, so want to show. 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is divisible by 3. This is what we want to show. We want to show 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is divisible by 3. So let's look at 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1. 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1. I've written this as 4 times 4 to the k minus 1. And to be very clear, these are grouped together. 
So why was I able to do this? Uh, let's remind ourselves of some algebra. If you have x to the a plus b, this is just x to the a times x to the b, right? Rules of exponents, if you're multiplying two uh, things that have the same base but different exponents, <coughs> the exponents just add. <coughs> so if I have 4 to the k plus 1, this is just 4 to the 1 times 4 to the k. Okay, fair enough. Now, uh, look, I have 4 to the k right here. And I have 4 to the k right here. So I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to replace 4 to the k with 3j plus 1. So now I have 4 times 3j plus 1 minus 1. So I have 4 to the k, or 4 times 3j plus 1 minus 1. Remind ourselves, what we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to show that 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is divisible by 3. So I want to be able to pull a 3 out of this. That's going to be my goal. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, can I undo? Yes. All right, so I'm trying to pull a 3 out of this. So let's go ahead and expand this 4 to each term. This is just going to be 12j plus 4 minus 1, which is 12j plus 3. Pulling out of 3, we get 4j plus 1 on the inside. And we've done it, right? We've written 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1 as 3 times something. So that means that 3 divides 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So therefore, 4 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is divisible by 3, and by induction, we're done. So, any questions on this problem? All right, awesome. If there's no questions, we will move on to the next. Okay, so <coughs> next, let's prove for every integer n bigger than or equal to zero, two to the n is less than or equal to n plus one factorial. Uh, let's remind ourselves of what factorials are. We haven't talked about them in two weeks. So for example, 4 factorial is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So factorials, you just multiply whatever you're doing the factorial of times every integer less than or equal to it all the way down to 1. <coughs> so we're trying to prove that 2 to the n is less than or equal to n plus 1 factorial. We have a starting point. This is a universal statement, so induction is a very good candidate. So let's prove it by induction. Let P of n be the sentence or the equation or the inequality. Uh, 2 to the n is less than or equal to n plus 1 factorial. Our base case is going to be when n is equal to 0. So let's show that P of 0 is true. So if n equals 0, uh, the left side of the equation is just 2 to the 0, which is 1. And the right side of the equation is 0 plus 1 factorial, which is just 1 factorial, which is just 1. So when p is 0, or sorry, when n is 0, both sides of the equation are 1, and 1 is less than or equal to 1. So p of 0 is true. So our base case is done. Next, we want to show our induction step. So we want to show that for each k bigger than or equal to 0, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 will also be true. So assume that p of k is true for some integer k bigger than or equal to 0. 
That means that 2 to the k is less than or equal to k plus 1 factorial. This is what we are assuming to be true. Now, what do we need to show? We want to show that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than or equal to k plus 1 plus 1. So this is k plus 2 factorial. This is what we want to show. So let's look at 2 to the k plus 1 and show that it's less than or equal to k plus 2 factorial. So 2 to the k plus 1 is just 2 times 2 to the k. Right? Again, this is just 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k, and by rules of exponents, this is how they work. When they add, you can split them up as multiplication. All right. Uh, hmm. Well, if you look at our induction step, this red squared box, we know that 2 to the k is less than or equal to k plus 1 factorial. So we know that 2 to the k is less than or equal to k plus 1 factorial. What that means is that if I were to, say, multiply both sides of this inequality by 2, I would have that 2 times 2 to the k is less than or equal to 2 times k plus 1 factorial. Well, we have 2 times 2 to the k right here. So that means that this 2 times 2 to the k is less than or equal to 2 times k plus 1 factorial. So at this step, we have that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times k plus 1 factorial. All right, <coughs> now what? Now what? Well, let me remind you guys of a property of factorials. If I had, for some reason, k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, this is just equal to k plus 2 factorial, right? Um, because, for example, when I have 4 times 3 factorial, this is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 4 factorial. So when I have a term plus 1 being multiplied to a factorial, when it's one term above it, I can just combine them as a single factorial. So I'm going to use this over here. This 2 right now, I can change this. I can change this too. How? Well, we know that k is bigger than or equal to 0. So that means that, let me write it over here. So I'm going to write it over here. I know that 0 is less than or equal to k. Right? If k is bigger than or equal to 0, that means that 0 is less than or equal to k. If I were to add 2 to both sides, I would get that 2 is less than or equal to k plus 2. Okay, so if 2 is less than or equal to k plus 2, that means that 2 times k plus 1 factorial is less than or equal to k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, multiplying both sides by k plus 1 factorial. So that means that this whole term right here, 2 times k plus 1 factorial, this is less than or equal to k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, because 2 is less than k plus 2. So at this step, we have that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than or equal to k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial. And by this property right here, I can combine these two terms. 
and this is equal to k plus 2 factorial. So I have that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than or equal to k plus 2 factorial, which is what we wanted to show. So we just showed that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than or equal to k plus 2 factorial, and by induction, we're done. <clears throat> so this problem has a lot of uh, inequalities going on, and it's a little confusing, so uh, again, we'll stop for uh, questions. If there's no questions, uh, then we're going to move on. All right. So let's talk about summations. Uh, this is a problem that's been around for a long time. Uh, people have talked about it. I guess certain people have talked about it for a long time. Uh, it's questions like this. What is the sum of the first 10 integers. That is, what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10? Um, it'd be a lengthy process, right? You could add each one individually, uh, but you could get there eventually. Uh, what about the first 100 integers? What, what if you were trying to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 100? You could, you could do it. it. It would take a really long time, though. Uh, what if it was like a thousand or a million, right? Is there a better way to add up the first however many integers you want rather than doing it one term by one term? Well, let's, uh, let's investigate. Let's do some investigative mathematics. Let's just start with uh, the sum of the first one integers. That's just, you know, one. One is equal to one. Uh, the first two would be one plus two, which is equal to three. The first three integers would be 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15. And you could keep going. But we get this like sequence right here. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. I wonder if this follows some general formula. It kind of looks like it does. It, it grows. Uh, so... The question is, is there any pattern or is there any formula that we can get from this? And the answer is yes, there absolutely is. Uh, and I'm just going to give it to you here and we're going to prove it. The sum of the first n integers can be given by the following formula. 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n for whatever n you want is just equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, which is pretty astonishing. Um, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Uh, let's see if this thing works. So I said over here that the sum of the first five integers was 15. And if you add these up one by one, it is 15. So let's see what happens if you plug in five into this formula. Do we also get 15? Just to give us some, uh, to make sure that it works. Well, if we plug in five, we get five times five plus one over 2, which is 5 times 6 over 2, which is 30 over 2, and that's, uh, that's 15. So it checks out. for At least for 5, it checks out. Um, okay, what about 100? What's the sum of the first 100 integers? Well, instead of it doing 1 by 1, you could just use this formula. It's just 100 times 100 plus 1 over 2, which is 100 times 101 over 2. And if you do the math, use a calculator real quick, this is just 5,050. So it's a really fast way to sum up the first n integers. 
and I guess I just repeated it here, the sum of the first 100 integers is 5050. So you could find, say, the sum of the first 1000 integers, you could type it into a calculator and get it like that very quickly. It's a really cool formula. Um, and we're going to prove that it works. So <clears throat> I would like to prove that for any integer n bigger than or equal to 1, the sum of the first n integers is just n times n plus 1 over 2. So notice that our starting point is now 1. In the last uh, examples that we had, it was 0, but this time we're starting with 1. So we will prove this by induction. It's a universal statement with a starting point, so induction is what we should use. So let p of n be the equation 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n, that is the sum of the first n integers, uh, is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Our base case is when n is equal to 1. So we need to show that p of 1 is true. If n is equal to 1, then the sum of the first 1 integers is just 1. So the left side of the equation, the left side of the equation is just 1. The right side of the equation is 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, which is just 2 over 2, which is just 1. So both sides are equal to 1, so the base case holds. So we've proven the base case. Uh, now let's show the induction step. We need to show that for each integer k bigger than or equal to 1, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. So let's assume that p of k is true for some integer k bigger than or equal to 1. That means that we are assuming that this thing is true. 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. We need to show that p of k plus 1 is true. So we need to show that the sum of the first k plus 1 integers, that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k plus 1, is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. So plugging in k plus 1 into this equation. This is what we want to show. All right, so let's look at the sum of the first k plus 1 integers. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k plus 1 is equal to, well, just that. Uh, all I did was I added some brackets right here, 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to k. So I'm kind of sectioning this guy off and leaving the k plus 1 at the end. And the reason I did that, because now I can make a substitution. I know that the sum of the first k integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k, is just k plus times k plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to replace 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to k with k times k plus 1 over 2. And then I still have this trailing k plus 1. Uh, remember our goal is to get this guy over here, k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. So let's uh, try combining this into a single fraction. Uh, the common denominator here would be 2. Oh, I made a big jump. Okay, so we have k times k plus 1 over 2, plus I want to get this k plus 1 term, uh, this k plus 1 term, uh, with a denominator of 2. So let's multiply top and bottom by 2. I would get 2 times k plus 1. All right, if I were to for, or distribute every term, I get k squared plus k over 2 plus 2k plus 2 over 2. Then I can combine fractions, and then I get this guy. k squared, I have a k and a 2k, which gives me 3k, and then I have a 2. So I get k squared plus 3k plus 2 all over 2. That almost looks like what we're looking for. We have a denominator of 2, 
but it looks like the top part of where this arrow is pointing is factored where ours is not. So how could we factor k squared plus 3k plus 2? Uh, well, use your favorite factoring method. AC method works. You want to find two numbers that multiply to get 2 and add to get 3. And that's exactly 1 and 2, right? 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So this factors to k plus 1 times k plus 2, and it's all over 2 still. So we're done. We just showed that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2, which is what we wanted to show. So by induction, we're done. Again, quick abrupt ending. We sh proved uh, that if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. So that does it for this example. Uh, I'll stop for questions again. All right, if there's no questions, we'll go on to our final induction example uh, of the day. Last, <coughs> last proof. For any integer n bigger than or equal to 0, I would like to prove that this formula is true. The sum from i equals 0 to n of r to the i is equal to r to the n plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1, where r is any real number you want uh, as long as it's not 1. So let's take a step back what is this saying uh summation notation let's remind ourselves what summation notation means and how it's used to do summation if you want to expand it out we're starting with i equal to zero so our first term in this sum is going to be r to the zero and since it's a summation we do plus uh, the next would be r to the one plus r to the 2 plus and we keep going until we hit our last term which is going to be n so r to the n and I'm claiming that this sum r to the 0 plus r to the 1 plus r to the 2 all the way up to r to the n is equal to r to the n plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1 Okay, so this is what we're going to prove. <coughs> it is a universal statement with a starting point that is n starts at 0. So induction is what we're going to use. We will prove it by induction. Let p of n be the equation this. So just restating that guy. Our base case is when n is 0. So we're going to show that p of 0 is true. So if I plug in 0 to the summation, the left-hand side, I get the sum from i equals 0 to 0 of r to the i. So the only number that we plug in is 0. So we just get r to the 0, and any number to the 0 is 1. So the left side of the equation is 1. The right side, uh, if we plug in 0, we get r to the 0 plus 1, which is just r minus 1 over r minus 1. So we have r minus 1 over r minus 1. Those cancel, and you just get 1. So the right side of the equation is also 1. So p of 0 is true. The equation holds if n is equal to 0. Uh, now, <coughs> let's show our induction step. If p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. We'll show that for each integer k bigger than 0, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. So assume that p of k is true for some integer k bigger than or equal to 0. So that just means we're assuming that this equation holds if we plug in k. So the sum i equals 0 to k of r to the i is equal to r to the k plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1. Uh, what do we want to show? We want 
to show p of k plus 1 is true. So we want to show that the sum when i equals 0 to k plus 1 of r to the i, we want to show that this is equal to r to the k instead of plus 1, we'll have a plus 2 minus 1 all over r minus 1. This is what we want to show. So let's look at the sum from i equals 0 to k plus 1 of r to the i and show that it equals this right fraction. So the sum i equals 0 to k plus 1 of r to the i uh, just expanding it out, right? R, this is just r to the 0 plus r to the 1 plus r to the 2 plus r to the 3 all the way up to r to the k plus 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just putting some parentheses in here. I'm sectioning off r to the 0 plus r to the 1 all the way up to r to the k, and I'm leaving the r to the k plus 1 at the end, kind of like what we did in the last example. <coughs> so here, this expanded term right here I'm going to collapse this back into summation notation. Okay? So if I collapse just that underlined portion, I get the sum i equals 0 to k r to the i. And then I still have the trailing r to the k plus 1. And why did I do that? Because now I can make this substitution. The sum from i equals 0 to k of r to the i, we're assuming that it does in fact equal r to the k plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1. So we make that substitution. And we still have this r to the k plus 1 at the end. Uh, so now, again, it's just a matter of combining these into a single term and showing that it equals this fraction right here. So let's get a common denominator. Right now, the denominator of, the, of this term is r minus 1. This one doesn't have one, so I'm going to multiply this term by r minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute this r to the k plus 1 to each term. And that gives me, uh, it would be r times r to the k plus 1 minus 1 times r to the k plus 1. And r times r to the k plus 1, this is just r to the 1 times r to the k plus 1, which is r to the k plus 2. And then on this side, it's just minus r to the k plus 1. So that's what happens if you distribute that term. And now we can combine fractions and cancel. So uh, what cancels? I see an r to the k plus 1 right here and a minus r to the k plus 1. So those cancel. And I'm left with r to the k plus 2 minus 1 over r minus 1, which is what we wanted to show. We wanted to show this fraction is equal to this summation, and we did. So by induction, we're done. We showed that this sum i equals 0 to k plus 1 is equal to this fraction, r to the k plus 2 minus 1 over r minus 1. All right, so any questions? Uh, I guess it's better type a Q in chat if you're going to ask a question. All right, so no questions. So that's it for proofs. Um, there's one more thing I want to go over that you'll see in your homework. In your homework, you're going to see <coughs> some kind of a question along the lines of this. It's not a proof, but it's uh, to oh, did I mention when exam two grades will be released uh, soon? Soon. I'll be releasing exam grades two uh, soon. It's been a very busy two weeks. <laughs> Um, but yeah, very soon, very soon. Before the end of the week, for sure. All right, so in your homework, it's going to ask you to find something along the lines of, uh, 
I don't know, 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus dot 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 plus like 400, okay? You'll be asked to find this summation. And one thing you should notice right off the bat is that these are all multiples of 4, right? So you should think, let me uh, go ahead and factor out a 4. So if I factor out a 4, the first term is just 1. 8 becomes 2. 12 becomes 3. Okay. And we keep going, and we get up to, what is this? That's 100. Right? So it's just 4 times the sum of the first 100 integers. So you're going to use the formula that you know, that 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. <clears throat> and you would say, okay, this is just equal to 4 times 100 times 101 over 2. Uh, some simplification, this 4 and this 2 cancel, so it's just 2 times 100 times 101. And this is 50-50, so what is this? Uh, I think that's right. 10,100? Yeah. So that's how you would solve a problem like this. And that's just all I wanted to mention, because I didn't put it in the PowerPoint, but this kind of question is on your homework. Okay, so that does it uh, for the lecture notes. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys coming in i know that online teaching is very uh could be difficult it's hard to stay engaged so i hope that this was uh really helpful for you guys um are there any questions before you guys uh, head out all right guys well if you want obviously you can leave now um if you have any questions, feel free to stay back. I'll be on for a little bit longer. Um, and otherwise, I will see you guys on uh, Wednesday. Again, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, I hope, I hope it was helpful. I hope it was helpful. All right, GSC Wednesday.